our chairman of the Monetary yeah. Policy and Trade Subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome back, uh, Director Mulvaney, to the committee. I appreciate your candid and refreshing testimony today, which continues to expose the breathtaking lack of accountability of the agency that you are now charged to lead. And I think you continue to make a powerful argument that your uh, that your predecessor perhaps unwittingly made, and that is that there is a desperate need for a fundamental overhaul of the structure of this agency to make it much more accountable. Uh, Dodd-Frank, as you may know, authorized the Bureau to issue a rule that requires disclosure of fees and currency conversion rates for remittances. And that rule that was promulgated by your pr predecessor applies to institutions that execute 100 or more remitt remittances annually. The Bureau's rule, as it turns out, created a tremendous amount of paperwork for credit unions and slowed down the process, adding additional expenses for those credit unions and, and customers. An example is in my home state of Kentucky, uh, where the Fort Knox Federal Credit Union was forced to actually exit uh, the line of services that they were offering to their uh, 100,000 members, mostly service members and their families, uh, because of the additional cost uh, of executing these remittances. And that made it harder for active duty military personnel, especially those who served at Fort Knox and who were deployed overseas on the front lines in South Korea, Germany, and other places in the Middle East. Uh, and that prevented those service members from uh, executing those remittances through their Fort Knox Federal Credit Union back to their families. I asked your predecessor about this uh, issue, this problem. I assumed that it was an oversight and that uh, your predecessor would have wanted to correct this. Uh, because he talked a lot about helping our veterans and helping our service members. But when I asked Director Cordray if he would consider exercising his statutory discretion to fix this rule, here's what he said. He said that the Dodd-Frank statute constrained him and mandated that he put a 100, uh, 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 100 uh, remittances uh, limit on it. And he actually, he didn't blame uh, those of us on this side of the aisle for that. He actually was blaming Democrats on that side of the aisle for voting for Dodd-Frank for, for tying his hands and not allowing him to exercise any discretion to help our uh, uh, active duty military personnel and their families. So Director Mulvaney, um, would you disagree with your predecessor? Do you believe that under the statute you have the discretion to provide the relief to these credit unions and will you exercise it? We do not interpret the statute to say that we have no discretion as to the, the 100 number. And so, uh, thank you for that very different answer uh, from your predecessor. Um, will you consider working with uh, our office and uh, our constituents, uh, particularly the Fort Knox Federal Credit Union, uh, to perhaps move that disclosure threshold from 100 to 1,000 so that uh, our men and women serving abroad can uh, uh, provide those remittances back to their families? There's actually good news on that front, Congressman. As part of the statute, we are required to do a five-year look back on various rules. This is one of them. We've actually already noticed uh, that we are doing that here, and we've requested information as to exactly the points that you've raised. So I would encourage anybody who is interested in this issue to participate in that RFI, that request for information, as we gather data to try and uh, determine whether or not that rule needs to be changed. Well, I, I appreciate that we have leadership at the Bureau now that's actually working for our men and women in uniform and not against them. And uh, uh, Mr. Mulvaney, as you know, the Bureau is not subject to the congressional appropriations process. I appreciate the fact uh, that uh, in your third quarter budget request, you noted that by design, this funding mechanism denies the American people their rightful control over how the Bureau spends their money, which undermines the Bureau's legitimacy, which of course may explain why you have all of these accountability issues at the agency that you now lead. Uh, I have consistently, year after year, term after term, introduced the TABS Act, Taking Account of Bureaucrats Spending Act, a bill that would meet the recommendation in your semi-annual report to subject the Bureau to the congressional appropriations pr process. How do you think that legislative change would improve the efficiency and, ac and accountability of your agency? Um, thank you for the question. And I'll say this to someone who used to sit where you all sit. Why you all don't want to put me on appropriations, I just don't get it. Uh, I really don't. I mean, to, to, why not have the opportunity to at least bring me in and ask me how I'm spending money, if I'm spending money to sponsor Dallas Stadium or whatnot? What, what's wrong with putting me on appropriations? It's one of the suggestions we make in our quarterly report. I may understand why it was set up that way in the first place, but why y'all would absolutely voluntarily give up the appropriations process for this bureau, I, I just don't D understand. Director, final question. Under the CFPB's high cost loan rule, Americans now cannot finance a, uh, a, a, a manufactured home loan. Uh, manufactured home loans of 50,000 or less have dropped 
uh, significantly. Will you uh, consider revisiting the high cost loan rule and increase the interest thresholds to help Americans realize the dream of home ownership? Honestly, that's the first time I've heard that with Mr. Barr. I'd be happy to get back to you on that one. I apologize. Thank you. Look forward to working with you on that as well. Yield back. Time of the gentleman has expired. The chair now recognizes.